I'm a media professional, you know this? Uh-huh. Yeah. Listen, you, my, you better not could do. That's why I'm... That's why I just sit here and do my thing. I can't do much, but what I, I can do, I will. I'm you know. with a device that's full of... bricked up. You can get it hooked up. Oh, yeah, that's right. Listen, that's a little... That's jacked up like a, like a soup bean sandwich. You ever had to try to eat soup beans on a sandwich? Soup beans on a sandwich? Uh -huh. It's nearly impossible. A soup bean sandwich. Yeah. I like soup beans and cornbread. Is it anything like that? Uh, kind of, except much soggier. Yeah, sounds, and, sounds soggy. Yeah, it yeah. makes a mess, but listen, it's doable. For Hug Song Smith. <laughs> how are you? I'm going to reel you in. I know I'm going to have to do that several times. Probably. That's how you roll. Probably. It takes a little reeling. Uh, welcome. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for doing this. Thanks for doing this. Hey, you thanks for doing wow. this. Wow, yeah. It's, a, it's something else I'm doing. I'm always doing something, right? I feel that. I'm I throw a lot of things at the wall. That's all right. You shoot a thousand shots. I mean, even the person, which it's debatable, who actually created the light bulb. Anyway, we're not going to go there because we're going to squirrel that today. Is anyway, that debatable? Whoever created it is. Whoever created it took, he didn't uh, fail a thousand times to take 2,000 steps. Mm -hmm. He took 2,000 steps. Because even when you fail, you learn. So you're still winning. Winston Churchill said success is uh, going from failure to failure without losing enthusiasm. <laughs> so, uh, well, he, he was a pretty smart I've guy. lost enthusiasm quite a bit, but uh, but here we are. Uh, so, Huck, you uh, you're kind of new to this game, right? I mean, uh -huh. you you you've kind of you've been a singer for how long? You, you, what, how long would you consider yourself actually being a singer? Because you were doing that. I'm assuming karaoke. People yeah. saying, hey, you could sing, you got a voice. Did you hear that? When did you first hear that? Um, my grandmother stopped the car in the middle of the road. I was three and a half. I three was, and a half. And then I was singing along with She the, screeched to a halt and said, what is this angelic voice I'm road. hearing from the car seat behind me? Because mm -hmm. I was singing Christina Aguilera, No for No, Key for Key, and she could not believe it. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, and, and then what after that? When did, when did you start kind of branching into performing? Well, so I didn't, nobody in my family is musical. Right. You say that. Nobody plays an instrument. I'm just the weird, strange little thing. And so. Do they wear funky hats? No, they don't no, do they anything do cool. They're just Are they tatted red. out? Anybody? They're brown, like the color brown. Or yeah. tan, like khaki. Or khaki, okay. like Jake's state bomb. So you're, you're, the, you're the oddball in the family. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, so I would say, you know, like, oh, I'm going to learn how to play the guitar one day. I'm just going to be able to pick it up and play it. And nobody believed me. Heck, I didn't even halfway believe it. Right. But um, I just, I guess the will and the want to, you know, I just watched everybody for years and I just sat and just, I mean, I would cry. I can't even watch television because I want to be on it. And so it's like, I can't, you know, and it bothers me. So. Still to this day, you don't watch TV because you're not on it? Right. Okay. Because I'm like, why did they put that plant there? They should move that. That should be over there. If I was there, I could fix it. I got you. Yeah. It makes me sad though because I really want to. I've always wanted to, but nobody really know. You know, when you're from a small town, to do what we do and to perform and all that, it's it's. So where is that small town? Where is that from? Uh, Mount Sterling, uh, Menifee County. Mm -hmm. I, I went to school in Mount Sterling, but you know, okay. during the summers in Menifee County. Menifee County ain't got no stoplight. Right. So it's like, dang. Well, Mount Sterling has stoplights. Well, yes, yes, it's grown. But you were out in a, another remote area outside of, of yeah. Mount Sterling mm -hmm. in Menifee County. Well, yeah, because my grandmother always said, you know, you need to go out in nature and ground yourself and read a book so you don't wake up stupid. Okay. Yeah. Read a book so you don't wake up stupid. In nature. In nature. Yeah. Okay. That's 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 some good wisdom. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. She was a pretty smart woman. So, uh, at what point did you say, I'm going to learn guitar or at least attempt to do this so I can start? Because you, you wanted to write music, I'm assuming. Yeah. 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 So, when um, did that happen? I got my feelings hurt. We went to a place down, I was down in Florida on tour, because this guy named Mark Storms, he found me, he says, whoa, 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 you're way more than a karaoke singer. And I was like, I know this, but nobody else knows this. So, anyway, I was down there, and they took me to this place called the Buckingham Blues Palace. And I call it, or I call it the Buckingham Blues Palace, but it's the Buckingham Blues Bar. Okay. Uh, a guy named Tommy Lee runs it, and I. You call all bars palaces, or just this particular one? Just this one? particular one, okay. because right. it's so fantastic. I got you. If you go there, you'll see. Okay. It's like a princess castle. It's my palace. But anyway, I got my feelings hurt uh, because I didn't know what key that my song started out in. I just okay. said the same key as they do in high. Well, you know, karaoke. When you go to tell them your song, you don't tell them what key it is. You just tell them what the song is. So, so you're I telling know. the band to play with you, and they needed a key. Yeah, there's a house okay. band, so they do like okay. this open jam thing on Sunday, okay. and they'll say, "Do we have any singers or players in the audience?" 
Now, to be fair, okay, they did prep me and pre-warn me and tell me the entire right there. When he asks if there's any musicians in the audience, don't raise your hand. Oh. Not ready. Okay. All right, and I'm I'm hooked. Yeah. yeah exactly. I got Say my ahead. feelings hurt. <laughs> <laughs> I got my feelings hurt, and so I I come out and I had his guitar. Mark Scott said. How in the world does Dolly Parton play the guitar? I said, she's got the big old long fingernails. How does she even wipe her butt without getting the hepatitis or the peak eye? I've got to learn how to play it. If she can play it, I can play it. Right. And he said, well, kiddo, your top string is E. And he said, you got your phone, don't you? And I said, yeah. He said, happy hunting. And so six hours later, after tuning every string to every letter that was in the alphabet on strings, I took out all the bad notes. <laughs> yeah. Uh <laughs> <laughs> I did, and now I can play it, and it all just makes sense to me. And I'm like, well, what in the world is that standard tuning they keep saying is standard? It's not. It's complete contradictory to a vibrational frequency of the earth. I don't even know where it comes from. It don't make no sense. Well, it's uh, it's, it's one that was agreed upon by men. Yeah. Where's the woman in that decision making? Um, I think it's a duality here. Didn't happen back then. Exactly. See, I so call you, for a reforming of the system. You, as a woman, have decided this is going to be the tuning of my guitar. Yes, and regardless. all women, actually, all women, for whatever reason, comprehend it much easier. Is that and, right? Yeah, and once you learn how to do that, you now you can play piano and bass. And listen, I'm even picked up a violin or two. Well, we're going to we're going to try one in your funky open tuning. I'm going to try to play along. I did. So uh, this is something in the orange, right? Is there a reason why you chose this? Well, I know how to play it. Okay, well that's good. That's a, that's, that's a good reason. See, I see karaoke to tra the tracks, but when I pick this guitar up, that's who I am. So it's hard for me to, to do the else. All right. All right. Ready right when you are. Lord. You go. You kick it off. I'll follow you. Do I do a five?
Smith, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so, uh, so when did you, uh, so you, 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 you did the thing, you, you embarrassed yourself at the band, or you, you, you got upset about it, whatever it was, and then you decided, I'm gonna learn how to play this thing, and yeah. from that point, how soon was it that you started writing music? I picked up the guitar, uh, and in six hours, I could understand, read, and read the music. Um, I, was, I wrote my first song um, about 12 and a half hours after I learned how to play guitar. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, do, you, do, you, do you still have that song in your repertoire? Yeah, but it's awful. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody's going to hear it. <laughs> and then I did this thing where I did the rip off of a... <laughs> Oh yeah, I do that too, yeah. all the time. Nobody I steal, knows. steal stuff constantly. Yeah, you just yeah. rearrange it a little. Just... All music is stealing. But That's right. Yeah. Song, it's like, well, what I love is supposedly John Lennon said, you know, great artists steal, good artists create. But apparently it was Picasso who said that initially, but John Lennon got credit for it. And I'm, like the I'm sure guy. somebody said it before. Yeah, 1700s, Voltaire, said it Voltaire said it before Picasso. Originality is just good imitation. Now, there you go. So, there you go. Beethoven, but, I mean, realistically, Beethoven did every single musical composition that we could even think of, truth be told. So if you want to get right down technical to it, we're ripping off Beethoven every opportunity. We get. We've only got so many notes. Exactly. That's right. That's right. We've got 12 of those bad boys at this point. It's all about arranging them. Yeah. So, at, so then you started writing, and uh, th then at that point, how long ago was that? I mean, this is all pretty new. It's in the past few years, right? Yeah, uh, 2021. 2021. In September of 2021 is when I left out. And then I got my feelings hurt and had to be a poor like everybody else, uh, probably, oh, uh, it was right before Christmas because we were down in Cape Coral and it was like 87 degrees. And I remember messaging back home and everybody's like cold. And there's like snow on the ground. I'm like, it's 87 degrees. You're like, I got no shoes on tonight. Shape my legs in a week. Yeah. And it was great. And they were all jealous. So yeah. I haven't shaved my legs in a week either, just saying so you know. December of twenty twenty one. Yeah. It's a problem sometimes. They get stuck in your beanie hose. That's right. It hurts. So and it, what did you do before then? Because well, you're not to you're in your thirties. Uh -huh. Right? Uh -huh. So how were you what what was happening getting to this point? Because I mean you're a late, very late bloomer to, to sound the way you do and to, because you you sound amazing. So I mean, what how did that what were you doing? Everything except for music. So my grandfather, he said, music doesn't pay the bills. Oh, okay. It's going to break your heart. It's just a hobby. Right, okay. And so I, there's no way that I could have, so I did everything but just to try to figure out what I was happy with and to see, figure out what he would keep paying for. So I had, I would. So you, you were homes, trying, you were just trying to. I was to, making the COVID vaccine, actually, technically, if you want to get to. I yeah. was uh, working for a company called Catalan. I don't know if Chester. I want to go down this rabbit hole. Oh, my <laughs> good Lord. Anyway, they anyway, were making the Pfizer vaccine, and the FDA approved it that Monday morning, and uh, I worked four days on, four days off. I was working at a pharmacy at the time and at Catalan. And uh, they tried to say that I had to take the vaccine. But all this time, you knew, I mean, at what point did you say, I, I mean, it was there for a, a long time that you were saying, I've got to do music. I always wanted to, and I used to sit to. and cry every night, almost every night. I would cry. Because I'm like, I know there's more for me because out there. you were making a COVID vaccine instead of music. Right. Yeah. Exactly. And I didn't want to. Just because you're good at something doesn't mean you, just because you can doesn't mean you should. Yeah, see, I mean, it's weird to me because we, we've talked to others in this session today that, you know, they started very young. Most of us were, you know, it, somewhere in our early teens maybe before that i mean many of us even before that that we, we began our music education or interest and you know started collecting instruments and playing things and i just i can't it's it's unfathomable to me to even think about you waiting that long i, I would have gone crazy as a music you know as an artist as a musician i just well, I can't Lisa, believe it. when i got here in 2020 in 2021 I didn't realize. You got here like when you were delivered to this scene. planet. <laughs> I mean, like in the music scene with the music people, but I, it broke my freaking heart because I learned that day that nobody truly sounds like the radio. You mean when you saw somebody live? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. When you hear them like backstage and you meet these people, you're like, man, it's like you don't look like your Facebook photo. 
Yeah. You know, it's like, you don't sound like that in real that's life. That's why I do radio. I have a face for radio, so oh, that's the that's idea, right? Good. But it broke my heart because, ah, uh, it's been years, because your voice is an instrument. I don't care what people say. So I would spent years honing in this instrument so that I could be up to par, so that I could just fit in with everybody. And then I get here and I'm like, whoa. But then I've done something that nobody else has done. So I, I just wanted to sing it. I just always wanted to sing it. So then here we sing it. Probably when I was, I don't know, I did a chemical change in my brain as a woman, and so I uh, matured, I okay. guess, and so I could be more honest with myself, 
and the fact that there were areas, because, I mean, if you met me 10 years ago, I was the best singer in the whole world. You, you thought tell you me were? Nothing. Yeah, you could tell me nothing. And oh, there you I was, couldn't learn nobody. anything. Nobody was going to teach me anything. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, that's why whenever I got my feelings hard, I had to pick up this guitar, because I thought, no, 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 no. There's a lot of things I can't do in this world, but music is not one of them. But you also, and, and you, you had a, an amazing mentor who I knew uh, as well, mm -hmm. Jesse Taylor, who was a phenomenal musician, who you worked with closely for a number of years, mm -hmm. and uh, he taught you a lot, did he? He, he, did. he really impressed a lot of uh, amazing technique on you. Mm -hmm. yeah, rules tell, are, tell, there tell are me no about rules. That. Well, Jesse was a very kind soul. God rest his soul. Yeah, he was yeah. a very, very kind soul. He, he meant well in everything that he did, and he, he definitely saw my potential. He found me on Kentucky Musicians' page, and um, he said, I'm sick, and uh, I'm not going to be here much longer, and I've written a lot of songs that he had went, you know, with Sonny Lemire down to Muscle Shoals, and, you know, a bunch of, I mean, these songs are great, they're good, and he's been just, he was sitting on them, looking for the right singer, and so he asked me to, to record them, and so I did, so hopefully they'll be coming out soon, because uh, that's how he had everything set up. So, so he knew he was dying. Mm -hmm. He knew, knew he had been diagnosed and, and terminal, terminally uh, passing, and so that's when you guys connected, and that's wow, mm -hmm. that's amazing. I, I don't fell know in love it, with him in the process, and it was yeah, you guys were yeah, and yeah, you guys were together for a few years. Yeah, wow. Yeah. And and what did I mean? Again, is it the, the vocal uh, technique that you have? It sounds. I mean. You've got to work at that. That doesn't do. that yeah. doesn't just fall out of somebody's head. Mm -hmm. I don't care if you got great pitch. I don't care if you got great technique. It just naturally, to get all of that stuff and the nuances and the, the dynamics. I mean, that's that takes a lot of work. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah. You have to you have to truly care about it. You know, your yeah. it has to be your passion. Because if it's not, then you're not going to do the best job at it. You know? Right. So music isn't for everyone. It's fun, and so for <laughs> most people it is a hobby, but for me it's A career life. in music's not for everyone, that's for sure. Well, uh, yeah, I mean, try. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> try, try to be a, an independent artist yeah. and, and have a career, that's a tough one. Yeah. Definitely, yeah. for sure. Well, uh, I guess, we, what was the other one we were going to do? What did we know. say? Well, I can't play Strawberry Wine. Oh, so, no, so we're going to do uh, Heads California Tales. Or Heads, Heads Car Carolina, Carolina, Carolina California. California. Yeah. I am dyslexic, just saying. So a song from my childhood. You, you, you gotta do this. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I, get, I might get it right. I might not. So this, so Jody Messina was an influence. Um, not vocally, because I mean, no offense. Like she's amazing. Her vote, her talk, but she didn't do anything fancy. You know? Right. So like Martina would, McBride. Mm -hmm. Now she's doing something fancy. So who who would you say your your biggest vocal influences are? Just mm -hmm. curious. Probably Carrie Underwood, Martina mm -hmm. McBride, you know, the usual. Tori Kelly, holy crap. Dolly Parton, was, was she in there at Dolly, all? Dolly, absolutely. Dolly was the very first thing. Uh -huh. I remember being younger. Right. Anyway, so I hear yeah. a lot of Dolly in your voice, so that's the thing. Right. Well, I grew up on Dolly. My grandmother, she had that sewing machine pedal, and the record player with Dolly on it. So, Coat of many colors that my mama So she would be me. sewing with, uh, with, a, with uh, Dolly. With Dolly. Uh -huh. So, okay. Working not to fight, <laughs> I can't live it. Yeah. All right, we're going to do another one. We're going to talk about your original stuff and where to get that. Yeah, Fine. that's, that's in my opinion, that's where the bread and butter is, I'm just saying. All right, kick this off. <laughs> All right. <laughs>